Hi guys, it's Infinity Week and that means Infinity Prizes. Every day this week we're giving away a different box set and a blister. Justin, let's see what today's is. Alright, I know I've shaved at the minute, but here's the magic. Oh yes, excellent stuff. Justin, tell us how you can win. Okay, we've got two videos per day going out for Infinity Week, guys. So, comment on one video, that's one entry. Comment on both, that's two entries. And if you're greedy and you really want a chance to win these cool prizes, comment on Beast of War and YouTube so you can have four entries into the prize draw. Excellent. Well, get button smashing now. Uh, now, before we go, we have an extra video going out this Saturday with something yeah. extra special from Infinity that Ooh. nobody has seen yet. And Carlos has put forward an amazing prize for it. So, guys, stay tuned. Watch on Saturday for the great video that's coming out that day for the mystery prize. Hey guys, so in this video, myself and Carlos from the Corvus Belly team are going to uh, have a look at some of the artwork for the combined army that didn't make it into the book, okay? Um, but to kick off, uh, Carlos, we um, we've done a video in the past, uh, myself, you and Gautier, talking about the background of the combined army, and we'll try and get a link below to that so you can actually get into that, get mm. some detail. But for a new player out there, can you give them, um, in, in a kind of a, like a, a snapshot of the, the background to the combined army? Yes, well, um, when you are getting into Infinity, you will see there are, there are uh, very, uh, lots of human armies. Uh, and finally you reach the, <laughs> going through the pages to the Combined Army. The Combined Army uh, is the, the alien conflict. At some point humanity that has been colonizing planets finds some alien uh, artifacts and relics in one planet and that leads the, the Combined Army to them. Okay, uh, the Combined Army is, uh, it has its origin in a evolved intelligence that is from uh, was created from some ancient alien race that has been erased that were the ur mm -hmm. u r u r ur uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, created this evolved intelligence that uh, at, at some point it is like it wants to be a god it wants mm -hmm. to become something else that more a, a physical presence and begins to to conquer civilizations through the through the entire galaxy and assimilates those, those civilizations and and uh, all, everything that fits their necessities to to the combined army in in order uh, to to seek for something that is called the, the transcendence that is like this wish of becoming something more like mm -hmm. like like a deity mm -hmm. <coughs> at some points. Uh, as, uh, for <laughs> for all this expansion uh, and conquer uh, process, uh, there are two races, okay, that uh, have become sectorial armies in Infinity. That are the Morat and the Sasbasti, and they both have their own backstory. The Morat are some like ape-like uh, humanoid creatures, very very aggressive, very very uh, focused on into violence uh, mm -hmm. and in their culture. They almost reach a point when they uh, exterminate themselves uh, between war after war after war. So the combined army uh, uh, recruits recruits uh, this this race, puts a little bit uh, of order into their lives because it was a really self-destructive culture, mm -hmm. and and uses them as of course as soldiers for for continuing expansion. The Sasvasti, on the other hand were a race that because a cosmic collapse, uh, because a supernova that uh, almost de destroyed their home planet, uh, their culture became uh, completely affected mm -hmm. for this event and even their anatomy and, and uh, behavior is focused constantly on survival. Mm -hmm. And that is why they agreed to um, collaborate with the combined army in order to uh, secure their survival mm -hmm. through everything. So what they want is to expand through the universe and put their seeds and mm -hmm. their, their you know, sons and daughters and granddaughters mm -hmm. uh, through all uh, known planets to avoid being extinct. As yeah. they, it almost happened with that uh, tragedy. They have a, they have a like a, a, a 
fear of extinction, so that it's yes, it becomes yes. a driving force for them. Your place is better than, than than me. I'm sorry for me. No, 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 you're okay. <laughs> Again, <laughs> it sounds better if you when you read the book and the fluff from Gutierrez. Really, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to simplify it with my words, <laughs> all the fluff. Well, let, let's take a look at let's take a look at some art actually from the Shivasti and bring up. We'll have we first do we have the Shivasti Sabotage and Destruction Unit Caliban. Nice short name there. Yes. Yeah, so um, can you, uh, so th <laughs> tell us a little bit about this artwork, you know, who designed it, you know, and, and some of the, the, the interesting features of it. Well, the whole process is first Gutierrez comes with the basic idea mm -hmm. of the troop and he develops a troop profile yeah. according with the origin and intention that this troop must have in Infinity Game and Fluff. Once he has a final troop profile and a developed backstory, uh, uh, he gives us uh, that information. He tells, uh, he tells us how it should look like and also how to the testers and everyone, how it must behave on the table. Mm -hmm. So uh, this unit came with the Paradiso book. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was a fire team for the Satrasti army that can also accomplish some uh, engineer tasks. Yeah. Okay. From that, Carlos Torres uh, goes to the drawing table and begins to make sketches and sketches and uh, he usually makes just one one drawing but he has made lots of versions and it is used the you know the oh, yes and, and makes a very dirty picture and the whole table is full of uh, you rubber know, yeah rubber, yeah, rubber, yeah. Rubber, uh, yes but uh, when he has something that uh, begins with you know very light very clear strokes or with the pencil mm -hmm. and when he likes what he's doing he begins to make more 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 definition mm -hmm. so we finally have a, a dirty pencil um, drawing drawing mm -hmm. but, the, but the, the way carlos torres uh, makes his drawings has a lot of volume he is very good at describing volumes with his with his drawings mm -hmm. so uh, sculptures appreciate that very much because uh, it has some three-dimensionality that makes them easy to understand the volumes. Yeah. This, is, this is particularly useful uh, when making robots. Mm -hmm. He describes very complicated shapes with that kind of drawing that he has. Mm -hmm. uh, when he has reached something that he likes, uh, in this case he has made also the back view. Yes. Uh, well, making the back view sometimes is complicated because you have to get the front view and twist it and make every all the elements have uh, its uh, yeah. correspondence and sometimes there are, are conflicts with uh, plates and volumes and sometimes you can see that some surface will collide and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to resolve all that so here we have the Sarvasti Caliban they insist in having this kind of uh, color scheme in order to make him uh, some slightly different from the other Sasbastis. Mm -hmm. For example, these shapes in the head are, are original from the Caliban troops. No other um, Sasbasti until now has had this, this kind of wings on, in, the, in the head. Yeah. Uh, putting racial variations into the anatomy of um, the Sasbasti is something that helps us to create different uh, miniatures. Mm -hmm. Because it's very, it's a stereotypic, it's a, it's a, a mistake you can make to create one um, alien troop, alien race, and make all the other miniatures look like the same basic yes. anatomy, mm -hmm. body, face that you have made for those aliens. Mm -hmm. You have to ma uh, add uh, um, different stuff. It's like if, we're, if we design a human being and we forget about uh, all the racial differences that we have. No, yeah. the same human being once and mm -hmm. again, again and again. That would be uh, wrong and gives more variety to the range. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it you know, he translated well to a miniature. You know, it's um, you can see you know, where the 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 even the very weapons and stuff are designed, and then how that actually translates uh, to the miniature itself. Right now, it's just one uh, Caliban miniature. In the future, there will be a multi-part box uh, in order to make the fire team. We mm -hmm. usually make that with fire teams. Um, next up, um, Spec Up Kodali. Well, a special operative. Yeah, we, we, she's it's just something as a, a oh, spec Oh, it's, it's it's different from a spec op, is yes, it? Yeah, yes. special operative then, Kodali. I, I love this miniature. This is just stunning. Can you tell us a little bit about the the inspiration for the artwork and? Well, uh, after oof, the whole Kodali process was different. I mean, 
it's a human turn into the combined army. So that uh, was like a new direction when making this this uh, new soldier. We already have uh, lots of more and Sasbasti designs, but this mm -hmm. was the polemic, the travel, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kodali maneuver that pissed so many Yuchin players because this was a troop from the Yuchin army mm -hmm. that after the events of Paradiso got like uh, recruit, like subsidized by the evolved intelligence. Mm -hmm. So she became evil. Like, mm -hmm. Let's just say it like that. So now we have to release a new miniature of Kodali that represents. All the dramatism of having this uh, good guy turn into an evil enemy, uh, it, ha it has to look menacing, it mm -hmm. has to look, um, you know, alien-ish. Uh, at the same time, all these elements of design that Carlos Torres had made uh, could have, you know, some kind of uh, continuity in the future. Maybe if this goes very well, we may, may make the new aliens that can come in mm -hmm. the future expansions look like this. Yeah. So he made the first, the body without the wings. We mm -hmm. already know that we are going to make something special for the back, mm -hmm. but we uh, didn't know what exactly. We were mm -hmm. going to draw the human figure separately from the wings because we are going to put in another layer all the options of wings that we have, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, he made all these, uh, you know, like flesh uh, texture mm -hmm. to her, and all these layers, over layer, over layer, and the tentacles on, in, in her head, that is obviously that she has been through some kind of uh, bioengineering yeah, modifications mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Uh, the two profile has a visor, so we can see a, a visor over there. She has um, uh, assault pistols, and mm -hmm. these were especially designed for her because these are human weapons uh, for an alien troop, you know. This yeah. is a grey area, a huge grey area in, look, in what is designed for the combined army. What is difficult uh, about the combined army when designing is to create racial different stuff for other races, but um, try to make everything fit together in a group shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually the, the group shots of the combined army are very colorful. Mm -hmm. We have uh, seen that through the years that people respond more uh, to the racial identities of the aliens. Mm -hmm. People prefer to choose uh, go completely Morat or go completely uh, Shasvasti. And if they choose to go with the combined army, they prefer especially the Ur troops, like the Anathematic, the Schiavoros, mm -hmm. and complement those units with Things like Kodali or the drones or the mm -hmm. Icadron Batroids, uh, troops that doesn't have any uh, relation with the Sasbasti or the Morat. People prefer to have uh, a continuity within yeah. their army. Yeah, yeah, you say it better than me. Which makes sense because you know well, we've seen that throughout the throughout the years of wargaming. You know, people like like their armies to have a particular look and feel, and they, they, it's. Uh, I think there must be an aesthetic thing about. Some people, well, the majority, I would imagine, disliking armies that are too aesthetically different. It feels like a like a ragtag bunch, I suppose. Yes. Um, she transferred to the miniature beautifully, though. You know, the the miniature for Kodali is absolutely stunning. Yeah, we were Tell us a little bit about the wings and the pro the design process for the wings. Well, uh, they were, you know, designed apart uh, during the, the concept sketches, but also they were sculpted apart. The Kodali miniature was sculpted by traditional sculpt Juan Navarro with his hands and, and all the, the stuff. The wings were sculpted in th using 3D technology and mm -hmm. they were the, the, the problem was to make uh, fit the, the sculpt and the wings uh, because they were two different sculptures in two different places. We have to provide a lot of information and care about the, mm -hmm. the union, the the joint, the joint and, yeah. and all those uh, problems. The hair, the tentacles were a problem because they come from the miniature and over oh, the... And over the, yeah. The, that was an obvious problem. I mean, we have to put lots of effort into that, asking the sculptor to create the tentacles, but in a, a specific way not to hit the wings. Mm -hmm. So it, it required lots of emails, you know, mm -hmm. and lots of previews. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it, it worked really, really well. And as you can see from the pictures of the, the miniatures, guys, it's just, she's just stunning. Next up, we have uh, Osnat, and she's a Morat 
hunting regular. As in the first video where we can see mm -hmm. the cover of the art book, the Osnat is already there. I, yeah. I think that this is a design that no one has seen yet because this is not a miniature that has been released yet. Mm. This later in the year we're expecting hopefully this miniature, yes? Yes, later in the year, probably about November, December, I guess, and mm -hmm. the Osnat uh, will be part of the Morat uh, starter pack. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, oh, I, and there, there, there's, there's the first year of a Morat starter pack as well. So. Yes, yes, I guess. So uh, what we decide when making this design, well, I, this, yes, this is my design. Uh, the main idea is uh, to create a, a female Mora. They, they asked me to be female, but she is like the shepherd of other creatures the, that are the hungries. This is the box of the hungries over there. Mm -hmm. Now the the hungries are are really alien looking. Lizardy beasts. beasts. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not uh, in intelligent. They're yeah. more like war dogs, something mm. like that. And so, so she's kind of like a, a shepherd. And as you can see from the the headdress, that uh, tell us a bit about that because that headdress is an important uh, is an important component of that miniature. Well, at some point uh, when you are designing, you have to create your own movie in your own head. Mm -hmm. Okay, why was the doing a, a design where she can put uh, parts of those animals over his body as, as his um, part of, uh, of the armor. And at some point I'll ask Gutierrez about, okay, it will be okay if this uh, Osnat is able to get inside, <laughs> in, in to the, a bunch of uh, um, hungries and can kill the, the alpha male or the mm -hmm. alpha female and, and become uh, in a tribal way like she is the, the, the new alpha mm -hmm. male, something like that. And uh, Gutierrez accepted the idea. So, because <laughs> he said uh, the weakest uh, female, more female can be the, can be the alpha male in a human community, you know. Yeah. So that is, this uh, improvised backstory uh, work for for the design. Would well, I think it's awesome because you know it looks like she's went in to um, a group, picked out this alpha male, and just cut him to pieces, and she's wearing him. And this is it's it's almost like the process of her instating herself as that alpha male that she's actually wearing the components of the creature she killed yeah, at the head of the pack. It's yeah. a very obvious primary image that mm. you have already guessed in your head instantly. Yeah. I mean because even the very weapon is is from the is from the actual the, the, the creature itself as well, isn't it? Yes, so. it uh, is is we we all are imagining we can imagine that. So uh, there's there are bones in, in the in the um, ponytails on in yeah. her head in, because all the moras have this this long hair mm -hmm. and now we can put elements here, there and also all the textures are more organic and less high tech than the usual mora armors that makes the miniature special I guess yeah yeah absolutely um, next up then because uh, that, that that hasn't been made into a miniature yet I cannot wait to see it in its miniature form yeah. now we have put a lot of responsibility of the sculptor's shoulder yeah so um, <laughs> next up we have the Shavasti Hajduk yes uh, so so who are they and um, can you tell us a bit about the design process for them well we already knew that this uh, will be a miniature with a, a special base because mm -hmm. uh, this, the, what makes it special the Hajduk are the they have the sapper ability that they are able to make foxholes. Mm -hmm. So as snipers, they create their their own sniper nest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this makes uh, you have to care about the back view very much because you know that uh, if a guy is uh, holding a sniper rifle in a foxhole, he's he's just uh, uh, a back. You know. Yes. Yes. You you have to make interesting volumes in that mm -hmm. back view because it will be most of the miniature. The rest, the chest the legs probably and the cover that it will have will probably hide lots of parts from, from the front design mm -hmm. because we are not going to make a supper miniature standing on his feet uh, holding the rifle, rifle like this yeah uh, apart from that the, uh, the sniper foxhole miniatures work very well people do like it very mm -hmm. much as the regular and the swaps so uh, you have to create something interesting in the back and mm -hmm. all those layers of that coat uh, if the sculptor is able to move them and to create you know 
uh, a good texture with them will be an interesting miniature. Yeah, and uh, uh, as it turns out, in the miniature format, which you, hopefully you're seeing at the moment, it's it's just stunning. It's so menacing looking. It really is. Yes. It's um, it's an incredible looking miniature. The thing with the the task of the sculpture, apart from creating the, the miniature, is moving the design. Mm -hmm. So that requires lots of thinking. Lot yeah. of okay, if this guy moves into this position, how does the code will feel? Uh, it's really complex. I mm -hmm. mean, they, it it takes their time to make the the, the miniature. Yeah. Well, uh, that's it for the Combined Army. And remember, those are pieces that didn't make it into the book. So mm. what's in the book is all new stuff. Yes, I can tell you. Uh, the Sphinx will feature in the book. And also the Anathematic and the Icadron Batroid. And uh, also the Hungries, uh, which has a very cool concept design, will be in the book. Mm -hmm. And a few more. So... Um, if you're interested in getting the book, remember that the book is now available for pre-order. And if you pre-order it, you get the Miranda Ashcroft miniature with it. Um, otherwise, you can pick it up at Gen Con and get the Miranda Ashcroft miniature. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And um, remember to post your comments below. And stay tuned uh, for the rest of the week.